Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'da. Habita fillah, Allah tabarak wa ta'ala's creation is vast and beautiful and full of fascination. And with that being the case, this is also a similitude for the affair of the mu'min, of the believer, that the believer's conduct should be reflective of this, the beauty and this is in accordance with the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa ala alayhi wa sallam. An Abi Dharrin Jundab ibn Junada wa Abi Abdurrahman Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma. An Rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqal Ittaqillah haythuma kunt wa attaba sayyat al-hasanata tamhuhaha. وَخَالِكَ النَّاسِ بِخُلْقٍ حَسَنٍ رُوَاهُ تِرْمِذِي In this hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa ala alayhi wa sallam, the hadith of Abi Dhar and Abi Abdurrahman Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma, they, it was narrated on the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he said, Fear Allah wherever you are and follow up wicked deeds with righteous deeds and it will expiate them and give people the good show people good moral character and conduct and righteous manners and this is in uh sunan uh, tirmidhi in this hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, there are immense fawaid and benefits. From those benefits, it shows us the importance of advising one another and especially giving advice to the youth. <clears throat> giving the youth the type of guidance that they need. And this is illustrated because the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he advised his sahaba radiyallahu ta'ala anhu majma'een to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the best of advice. Another uh, excellent benefit of this hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is as Ibn Rajib, uh, one of the great imams of Ahl sunnah he mentioned, he said, فَهَذِهِ الْوَصِيَّةِ وَصِيَّةِ الْعَظِيمَةِ جَامِعَ لِحُقُوكِ اللَّهِ وَحُقُوكِ الْعِبَادِهِ Ibn Rajib rahimullah ta'ala, he said, in regards to this hadith and the excellent advice that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave, he said, this uh, wasiyah, this advice, is excellent advice and comprehensive, which includes the right of Allah or the rights of Allah and the rights of his servants. And as we know from another hadith of the Prophet وسلم, that the right of Allah as the Prophet والسلام, said when he was on a a donkey with Mu'adh ibn Jabal. And he said, Ya Mu'adh, tadri ma haq Allah al ibadi wa ma haq al ibadi Allah. He said, O oh, Mu'adh, do you know the right of Allah upon his servant and the right of the servant upon Allah? Mu'adh, radiallahu ta'ala, and said, Allah wa rasulu wa'alam. He said, Allah and his messenger know best. And then the Prophet sallallahu responded by saying, Haq Allah al ibadi ya'buduhu la yushirku bi shayin. Wa haq al ibadi Allah la yu'adhima man la yushirku bi shayin. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam responded by giving the haq of Allah. He said, the right of Allah upon his servant, is that he worships him and him alone and he associates no partners with him. And the right of the servant upon Allah is that Allah does not punish him if he does not associate partners with him. So if you actualize Tawheed, worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, and you understand the concepts of Tawheed, not just in a general sense, but you understand and you haqqaq a Tawheed, you practice that and implement that in your life, then you are giving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala his right and you will be amongst those who do not receive punishment bi idnillah ta'ala. Going back to the hadith, other fawaid from this hadith, <clears throat> as the Prophet sallallahu as was mentioned by Ibn Rajab, that this hadith shows the right of Allah, as we mentioned, and this comes in the statement when the Prophet sallallahu said, Taqillah, fear Allah. So fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is adhering to his commandments and avoiding his prohibitions and putting a barrier between you and the hellfire. 
And that's how some of the Salaf al-Saleh, Ridwan Allahi alayhim, that they explained uh, uh, the concept of taqwa. And as far as the haq of the servants, meaning the haq of the rest of the creation, we understand that in this hadith because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, وَخَالِقَ nasa bi khuluqin hasan." The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, and uh, illustrate for the people, you know, give them the excellent, uh, your excellent conduct and beautiful manners. So we understand that that has the right, that has to do with the rights of one another. That has to do with the rights of the creation. So the mu'min who's following the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who's following the sunnah of our Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam, is, is illustrating it by having excellent conduct, excellent manners. And this is a form of da'wah. If you want people to embrace Islam, if you want people to accept your advice, if you want your Muslim brothers and sisters to have guidance, then you should show them and illustrate for them good, appropriate, righteous conduct. The Prophet ﷺ said in another hadith, مَا مِنْ شَيْءٍ أَثْقُلُ فِي مِيزَانٌ مُؤْمِنْ يَوْمُ الْقِيَامَ مِنْ حُسْنُ الْخُلْقِ وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ يُبْغِذُ he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there isn't a thing that weighs heavier on the scale of a believer than righteous conduct. And very, verily, Allah hates wicked uh, and sinful speech. This is also a hadith in uh, Tirmidhi. So it shows us a habit of Allah that from this hadith there are so many immense uh, benefits. A last benefit I want to mention, and there are so many that the scholars of Islam have mentioned regarding this hadith. But the, the point I want to focus on is where the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said, وَاتَّبَعَ سَيَّاتْ الْحَسَنَةَ تَمْحُهُهَا He, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, and follow up your wicked deeds with good, you know, righteous deeds, and they will expiate them. The scholars mention that there are two ways that, this, uh, that a person can, can follow up their wicked sins uh, their wicked deeds with something righteous. The first way is doing something specifically for that sin. So, for example, if you were using uh, drugs, for example, which is muharram, and you know it's a sinful act, that you repent from it, but you also do something, maybe you, you spend some charity specifically with the intent related to that sin. So that's being very specific. Then there's the general way that if you've done a sin, that in general you just do good deeds, hoping that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive you. And we ask Allah, Azza wa Jal, the Almighty, to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless us with ilm al-nafiyah, wa rizqin tayyibah, wa amal al-muttaqabinin, wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad.